Well, in order to get a part in the charity play, Jane had to pledge herself to sell 50 tickets at $3 a piece. She didn't know she had signed to be financially responsible for the tickets she couldn't sell. But when she found out, she told Mr. Race she would think of a scheme to get rid of them. Our scene now is the rehearsal hall where we find Mr. Hampton directing a love scene in the second act. Listen. All right now, Mrs. Lewis, we'll run over that scene once more. See if you can't put some fire into it. And Mr. Cooper. Yes? How about snapping into it this time? I'm doing my best. Oh, no, that wasn't your best. You can do much better, I'm sure. Are you ready, Mrs. Lewis? Yes, sir. Mrs. Weatherby is in her bureau. She's just finishing dressing to go out. A knock at the door and Mr. Weatherby comes in. Okay, places. That's it. A knock. Yes? Who is it? It's I, my dear. May I come in? Well, uh, yes. Yes, come in. Door open. He comes in. Am I intruding? Of course not, but I'm in such a hurry, my love. I really must fly. But, sweetheart, I've only just come home today. I've been away a whole week. Surely you're not going out tonight. Oh, but, Ted, I told you when you called last night, I already made this appointment. Oh, call it off, can't you? Of course not. You're beautiful tonight. Thank you, my love. Oh, careful, don't muss me. Oh, what's a little muss? Robert, please. Can't I kiss my own wife? Of course, but I told you I'm late. Robert, you're crushing my dress. I'll buy you another. <laughs> Silly boy. Silly because I'm in love with my wife? Well... Well, that's where the maid comes in, isn't it, Mr. Hamden? I know it. We're in heaven's... A Mrs. A. Yes, sir? Why don't you come in? What are you doing? That's your cue. Oh, I was watching Mrs. Lewis. Well, what's your cue? Don't watch Mrs. Lewis. Oh, but I have to watch Mrs. Lewis. I'm the understudy in case she gets sick Mrs. Or Ace, I'll thank you to stop wishing I'd get sick. Oh, I'm not wishing it, but this weather is so changeable, well, you know. Well, don't you worry Ladies, yourself about please. me. Ladies, please, let's go on with the rehearsal. Mrs. Ace, will you please come in on cue? Mr. Weatherby has just said silly because I'm in love with my wife. That's the cue. Give it her again, Mr. Cooper. Silly because I'm in love with my wife. You rang, madame. No, no, Mrs. Ace. Well, he said silly. It's not you rang, madame. Well, that's what it says here. Yeah. It's you rang, madame. Isn't that what I said? No, you read it. You rang, madame. Yes, you rang, madame. Isn't that what you said? No, I said you rang, madame. There must be an echo here or something. I keep hearing you Mrs. say you Mrs. Ace, it's a question. You're asking her if she rang. It's as if you were saying, did you ring? You rang, madame. Oh, with a rising inflection. I see what you mean. I've been studying it the other way. Well, study it my way now, will you please? All right. You rang, madame. You rang, madame. Long rang last. Madame. Now, we'll run over this whole scene again. Uh, Mrs. Lewis, I don't believe you've quite got the feel of this scene yet. And as for you, Mr. Cooper, I'm quite sure you haven't. This is drama, not fast. The way you two just played it, you'd be laughed out of the theater. Now, if you... Oh, will one of you ladies back there stop that phone from ringing? Mrs. Anderson, would you mind answering that phone back there? Yes, Mrs. Anderson. Oh, what a rehearsal this is. It's bad enough the way you two are playing this scene without these interruptions. Well, what did we do that was wrong? Everything, my dear. Uh oh There wasn't one believable line between the two of you. I don't think either of you knows the mood of this scene, do you? Well, what do you mean, mood? Mood, Mr. Cooper, is something you haven't got. And I'm afraid it's too late to start teaching now. Well, after all, Mr. Hamden, I'm only an amateur, and I'm only doing this to help oh, out. Oh, for Mrs. Ace again. For me? Mrs. Ace, would you mind not turning this rehearsal hall into your office? All right, but this is important. Excuse me, please. Oh, of course, Mrs. Ace. This is only your fifth phone call today. The play is only two weeks off. Yes, I know. I'll be back in time. Mr. Hamden, if you'll give us some constructive criticism instead of being so sarcastic... I'm I... sorry, Mrs. Lewis. I didn't mean to offend you. But I told you every time we run through this scene that Mrs. Weatherby has only married this man for his money. She's not in love with him, and she must convey that idea to the audience. Hello? She toys with him. Yes? On the other hand... Mr. Weatherby is very much in love with this woman. He doesn't realize that she's using him as a stepping stone. I understand that. Oh, well, you don't play it that way, Mr. Cooper, and neither do you, Mrs. Lewis. I tried to. What's your address, please? Well, I didn't get that impression from the way you just played it, Mrs. Lewis. You should pull away from him when he tries to kiss you, as if you feel almost repugnant, you see? Thank you very much. Of course, we try it again. 
Now, we we'll start with the... Uh, Mrs. Hamden, that didn't take long, did it? No, but I would like to go on with the rehearsal without all these interruptions. Well, I've got something very important that I have Casey, to do. everybody. Mr. Hamden, Mr. Hamden, would you mind if I rested for a few moments? I'd like to take time out just for the Oh, all right. I'll tell you what, Mrs. Lewis. You sit out here with me. Mrs. Ace. Yes? You run through this scene with Mr. Cooper. All right. Uh, sit here, Mrs. Lewis. Now, maybe I can show you what I mean. A very good suggestion, Mr. Hamden. All right, places, everybody. Where are you going, Mrs. Ace? I'm going back here to wait for Mr. Cooper to say Jake. No, no, I want you to play the part of Mrs. Weatherby. Oh, me? Oh, what's the matter, Mrs. Lewis? Do you feel all right? I feel I, fine. I want you to stand in for Mrs. Lewis. I want to show her how she must look in the part. Oh, you want me to show her? Yes. Oh. Now, you're just finishing dressing. Read the lines. Oh, wait a minute. There comes a knock at the door. Uh -huh. All right, Mrs. Ace. Yes, who is it? It's I, my dear. May I come in? Why, uh, yes. Yes, come in. Door open. He enters. Am I intruding? Of course. Uh, a knock. I didn't see the knock. Of course not. But I'm in such a hurry, my love. I really must fly. But, sweetheart, I've only just come home today. I've been away a whole week. Surely you're not going out tonight. Oh, but, Pat, I told you when you called last night Mrs. That... Ace, that Pat, not Pat. The man's name is Robert. Oh, yes, Pat. Oh, but, Pat, I told you when you called last night I had already made this appointment. Oh, call it off, can't you? Oh, of course not. You're beautiful tonight. Thank you, my love. Oh, careful, must miss me. Oh, what's a little must? Oh, yes, must. Uh, Robert, please. Well, can't I kiss my own wife? Take her in his arms, that's it. Oh, please, Mr. Cooper. Hold it. Ah, <laughs> uh, just hold that. Now, you see, Mrs. Lewis, in that position, the audience must realize that you're not happy in his arms. I do. But he doesn't realize it. In fact, he holds you very tight. Please, Mr. Cooper. You see, your back is to the audience. You're wearing a backless evening gown. And they realize from the slight shrug of your shoulder that you're trying to break away from him. Oh, I'll get it now. Well, shall we go on now? No, no, just hold it. Now, can you visualize yourself there? Do you see the action you go through? I think so. Isn't this embarrassing? Not to know, but done, of course. <laughs> and I hardly know you, Mr. Cooper. And the whole scene, from here on out, is played to your back to the audience, even when the maid comes in. I'm just imagining we're dancing, Mr. Cooper. You'll break away and stand just as you are with your back to the audience as you talk to her. I get it. All right, finish the scene. Mrs. H, you're all right. Um... But I told you I'm late, Robert. You're crushing my dress. I'll buy you another. <laughs> Silly boy. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Nothing. Your price was... Well, thanks, Mrs. Lewis. I like that part there, uh, too. Uh, let's go on with the scene. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Cooper. <laughs> really? Because I'm in love with my wife? Uh, yes, Marie, I did. No, no. Read the maid. Oh, I'm the maid now, huh? Yes, please. Well, there's so much going on around here that... Uh, uh, you rang, madame? How's that? Yes, but you don't read it in Mr. Weatherby's arms. Over there. Oh, oh yes, I forgot. Well, goodbye, Mr. Cooper. Yes, Thanks that for the... telephone again. Mrs. Anderson, will you please? Yes, Mrs. Anderson, I'm just I never saw a rehearsal like this. Mrs. Ace, the maid, come on in. You rang, madame? Oh, can't you get a little poised for the part? Look at you just standing there. Can't you try a little curtsy? Say pardon? Curtsy, try to curtsy. Put one foot back of the other a bit and sort of bend your knees as you speak. Oh. oh, I see what you mean. I come in like this, and I kind of put this foot back here. And now you bend your knees as you read the line. You rang my... Oh, who put me? This is a don't sit on the stage. Oh, I didn't mean to sit on the stage. I just fell. I'm not phone call for Mrs. Ace. For me? Oh, I'm so tangled up here. Excuse me, I'm sure busy around here this today. This is gone far enough. I can't stand for this. Well, I'll be back in a bit, mate. Well, Mr. Hampton, if you would stop getting those phone calls... Quiet, let me think. Quiet, everybody. I don't know where I am. I've got to think of something to break this up. Hello? Yes? Uh, how many, please? Hello? All right. What's your address? Yes? Yes, I see. All right. And mine is 5423 North Boulevard. You can say I'll just check to me first, and then I'll... Yes. All right. Goodbye, Sam. That settles it. Mrs. Ace. Yes, Mr. Hamlet. What is this? What are these phone calls? Don't you realize we're having a rehearsal here? We're putting on a play? Your phone calls are upsetting everybody. Well, the phone calls are about the play. Huh? 
What's that? Well, it's about those tickets Mrs. Burnside made me sign for. I can't sell them to anybody because everybody bought them, and they say they're too high. So I advertised in the paper, and I gave this phone number. You advertised? Yes, I made a sale out of it. I'm selling three dollar tickets for a dollar ninety eight. You what? Mrs. H., you can't do that. I'll tell Mrs. Burnside. Well, Mrs. Anderson, I'm not going to pay all that money. And I figured that whatever I could get for them, I'd save that much. I'm not directing any bargain price play. You're going to have to pay the difference yourself, Mrs. H. I know, but isn't that better than paying for the whole thing? It is not. <laughs> Silly boy. What? Of course it is. Anybody knows that something's better than nothing. At least Jane is on the job. Just how the ticket committee takes to this scheme of hers, we learn when next we meet the Easy Aces.